Welcome back, psychology enthusiasts. Today, we embark on a thrilling quest, defining intelligence. What exactly does it mean to be intelligent? Buckle up, because we'll explore four unique perspectives that paint a fascinatingly diverse picture. First, let's consult the Oxford Dictionary. They define intelligence as the global capacity to understand the world, think rationally, and use resources effectively, think of it as a compass guiding us through life's challenges. Now, travel back in time with Alfred Bennett, one of the first intelligence researchers. He saw intelligence as the ability to judge well, understand well, and reason well, basically, strong mental muscles for navigating the world. But wait, there's more. J.P. Doss takes us beyond the purely cognitive. He defines buddy intelligence as encompassing mental effort, emotions, and even opinions. It's a holistic view, recognizing the influence of our inner world on how we think and act. Finally, Sternberg emphasizes our ability to adapt and shape our environment. He sees intelligence as not just reacting to challenges, but actively creating solutions that benefit ourselves and society. It's about being an architect of our own world. Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences, which opens the door to a diverse understanding. Forget thinking of intelligence as one, fixed score. Gardner proposes eight distinct intelligences. Bodily kinesthetic. The power of your body. Think athletes, dancers, surgeons, using their bodies with grace and precision. Naturalistic. Nature whispers, and you understand. Think naturalists, farmers, conservationists, deeply connected to the environment. Musical. Let the music move you. Think musicians, composers, conductors, creating and appreciating the magic of sound. Spatial. See the world in unique ways. Think architects, designers, pilots, visualizing, manipulating, and navigating spaces. Logical mathematical. Logic is your game. Think scientists, mathematicians, engineers, analyzing, reasoning, and solving problems with clarity. Linguistic. Words are your playground. Think writers, poets, teachers, using language to express, communicate, and persuade. Interpersonal. People as puzzles you can solve. Think therapists, leaders, salespeople, understanding others' emotions, motivations, and intentions. Intrapersonal. Know thyself. Think introspective thinkers, therapists, artists, understanding your own emotions, motivations, and desires. Today, we delve into Robert Sternberg's triarchic theory, a powerful model that reveals three unique ways we can be smart. Buckle up, because we are about to unlock the different dimensions of your intellectual toolbox. Forget thinking of intelligence as a single number. Sternberg believes intelligence is much richer, suggesting the ability to adapt, shape, and select your environment to achieve your goals. It's not just about solving problems, but about navigating life's ever-changing landscape. Now, let's meet the stars of the show, the three types of intelligence proposed by Sternberg. Componential intelligence. Think of it as the analyst side of your brain. This is the ability to process information, solve problems, and think critically. Imagine dissecting puzzles, analyzing arguments, or cracking mathematical equations. Experiential intelligence. Unleash your creator, potential. This intelligence involves using your past experiences and intuition to come up with new solutions and ideas. Think inventing gadgets, writing stories, or finding unique approaches to everyday challenges. Contextual intelligence. Channel your inner pragmatist. This intelligence is all about adapting to your environment. It's the street smarts that help you navigate social situations, understand cultural norms, and find your way in different contexts. Just like a symphony needs different instruments, these intelligences work together. You might use your analytical skills to understand a problem, then rely on your creativity to find a solution, and finally apply your street smarts to implement it effectively. Next, the elements Componential Experiential Contextual Subtheory, which are meta components, performance components, knowledge acquisition components. Imagine your mind as a complex machine. The meta components are like the control panel, overseeing and regulating the entire operation. They're the strategic thinkers, planning, monitoring, and evaluating your cognitive activities. Think about deciding how to approach a problem, checking your progress, or adjusting your strategy based on new information. That's the power of the meta components at work. Now, the performance components are the busy executives who put those plans into action. They're responsible for carrying out specific tasks, like comparing information, generating ideas, or making judgments. Imagine analyzing data, solving an equation, or writing a persuasive essay. These are all jobs for the performance components, following the instructions from the meta components. But where does all the information come from? Enter the knowledge acquisition components, the tireless librarians constantly gathering and storing knowledge. They're responsible for learning new things, remembering information, and making connections between different ideas. Think about reading a book, attending a lecture, or having a conversation. These activities feed information to the knowledge acquisition components, who then make it available for the other components to use. Remember, these components don't work in isolation. They're all interconnected, with the meta components using knowledge from the library to guide the performance components in their tasks. It's a beautiful collaboration that makes your mind tick. Share your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned for the next episode where we'll explore other approaches to understanding intelligence beyond tests alone. See you there.